Some games were made for people who are just starting out in gaming, and some are not. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Most Difficult Games for New Players. Starting off with number 10, it's Escape from Tarkov. So, getting right into it. Escape from Tarkov is a hardcore FPS with some MMO elements, and it has a pretty basic concept. You start a game spawning on one side of a map and have to make it to the other side without dying, which, yeah, is easier said than done. Along the way, you'll have to deal with AI-driven scavengers and other players that are looking to steal your loot. That's where a big part of the learning curve comes in. If you die, other players can take pretty much anything you've got on you. Survival in this game is dependent on what your equipment is before starting, so if you decide to spend all of your hard-earned cash on some sweet new weapons but then get shot in the back, you're basically sent back to square one, so yeah, that money's gone, and so's your weapons. There are a few ways to protect your inventory at least. You can obtain and secure containers that function as permanent safe inventory slots, and you can buy insurance. So if there's something good you really want to keep, there are ways to do that. But surviving is very tough, because this is one of those hardcore shooters where death can literally come at any second. You'd think that the AI scavengers wandering around would be chumps, but they are not. They're very accurate, and they're very dangerous if they see you. Sometimes scavengers are, like I said, other players, and that makes them even more dangerous. I haven't gotten into all the complex systems in the game, like how any ammo left in a magazine stays with it, and how you have to keep track of how much ammo is in each individual mag. Like That's a level of complexity we're talking about here. When you combine that with a highly deadly multiplayer environment, you got a game that sends new players running for the hills, let's just say. And number nine is the Armored Core series. Now, if you want to talk about hardcore shooters, you look no further than the Armored Core games. These are brutal games, and there's a few reasons why. First, the mech customization is extremely complicated and in-depth, and you could make a ton of mistakes. The controls can be a little awkward and are frankly difficult to get used to, and the mission design, depending on the game, can be absolutely brutal. Common consensus is that the hardest games in the series are Armored Core 2 and Last Raven. Last Raven is especially cruel with some of its missions that kill you in seconds right as the game starts. If that's not discouraging to new players, I really, I don't know what's gonna be. This includes the first mission of the game, by the way. Um, it does not get easier from there either. They throw bosses at you at the end of already brutal missions, and it's likely that the first time you encounter these guys, you'll be half dead and almost out of ammo anyways. And if you die, you gotta start it all over again too. Now they're not all quite as cruel as Last Raven, but they're all challenging in their own way. And for modern gamers, starting these games up for the first time can kind of be a bit of a culture shock. Like even the controls take a serious amount of getting used to. And number eight is Dota 2. In comparison to Tarkov, Dota 2 is definitely an easier game to get into as far as the basic mechanics. They're not quite as complex, but if you actually want to win, that is where things get ugly. What makes Dota 2 so difficult is the amount of heroes. Like, there is a lot of them. Every single one has different strengths and weaknesses, and if you want to do well in a game, you need to have at least a cursory understanding of what all of them are capable of. Not only from an offensive perspective, where you have to be able to execute viable strategies, but also defensive. And snowballing is absolutely a thing in this game, so if you're not pulling your weight, things can quickly get out of hand. Compared to a lot of multiplayer games where dying isn't a big deal, if you die a lot in Dota 2, you're actively helping your opponents win. That's at least partially the reason that the community for this game is considered a little toxic. It can be really frustrating even if you're a veteran. One thing I hear a lot is that getting past the toxicity is one of the biggest hurdles for newbies, and just learning to chill and take all of that nastiness and stride is a skill all of its own. And you'll need it if you want to have fun. And number seven is the Kerbal Space Program. Like, yeah, it looks like a cartoon, but this space flight simulation game is no joke at all. The main challenge of the game is to create functional rockets and fly them into space, which sounds very simple, but everything on your ship is simulated using actual Newtonian dynamics, so blowing up mid-flight isn't just a possibility. When you first start out, it's, it's very likely. There's a career mode that's pretty thorough about how everything works, but it's also still pretty difficult to wrap your head around everything especially if you're not like a math nerd like getting to the moon or the mun as it's called in the game is really step one and the game just gets exponentially more difficult from there it's a game that starts out really hard and keeps getting harder the deeper you get into it
And number six is Arma 3, is basically the ultimate military simulator sandbox thing, right? And just running around and shooting isn't more complicated than what you would experience in a regular FPS, but how you do it does feel significantly different. Everything's slower, more deliberate, more realistic, and death can come in an instant uh, from a stray bullet fired by someone you can't even see or hear. Situational awareness is pretty much the name of the game in Arma 3, so learning to navigate the many any maps, communication systems, and radar functions, I, it's essential to understanding this game. Vehicles only add to the complexity, too. Just learning to fly a helicopter without crashing, oh, it's going to feel nearly impossible at first. Like, at least the game is known to have a pretty forgiving and friendly community, so that's at least one hurdle new players aren't going to have to deal with. But everything else, uh, this one's tough to penetrate. And number five is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Ever heard of Project Zomboid? Like, that's a really complex and crazy game, but Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead is that game on steroids. Project Zomboid is basically a wall of death for newcomers, but this game is something else. There's no tutorials, everything's gonna kill you, and if you want even a chance of survival, you need to figure out the game's somewhat obtuse control scheme. In a nutshell, the game's a roguelike zombie survival simulator, which sounds, I mean, basic. You've heard that a million times times, right? But believe me, it is not. It's a survival game first, so death comes in many forms. You can die of hunger, uh, thirst, heat, exhaustion, you can get sick, you can get addicted to drugs. I mean, there's a million possibilities. And it's the realistic details that can really catch you off guard. Like if you fire a gun inside, it affects your hearing. That's the level of detail we're talking about here. And one of the most complex mechanics here is the crafting system. Like, you know a game is complicated when they describe how many calories something has and if it conducts electricity or not. And number four is EVE Online. And in terms of complexity in MMOs, there's nothing as intimidating as this. A lot of people jokingly call it Spreadsheet the Game, and uh, that's not entirely wrong. There's so much to keep track of in this game at any given time, and just staying afloat as one ship is difficult enough. EVE Online, however, is a game all about cooperation. We could spend this entire point just talking about the corpse and how difficult they can be to organize, but just at a basic level, looking at the interface can be overwhelming. With the amount of options and menus you have available, uh, like many games on this list, EVE Online is a game that greatly benefits from online tutorials as well as help from other players. Maybe the most intimidating thing about it is that while there's a lot to gain by playing EVE Online, there's also a lot to lose. The game's hardcore. If you lose your ship, that's it. It's gone. According to this PC Gamer article, of the 600,000 new players that started up EVE Online in 2018, only about 10% played it longer than seven days. It's a game with an intimidating reputation, and while it's probably not quite as bad as the worst horror stories make it out to be, it is no joke. And number three is Dwarf Fortress. Now, you can't make a list like this without bringing up Dwarf Fortress. Obviously, we've talked about this game before, but just looking at the thing is baffling enough. For new players, it can be difficult to tell what you're even supposed to be looking at, and that feeling doesn't go away for a long time. The ASCII art is a huge wall to get over, but once you actually get into the game, things don't get easier. The premise of the game is a classic build a thriving settlement type thing. It's basically fantasy The Sims. If you started out with absolutely nothing and your Sims were all manic depressive dwarves trying to survive in an underground death trap. It's a famously complex game with systems layered on top of systems that simulate everything from minor bruises to entire extinct civilization. Just keeping your dwarves alive is a tall enough order and the amount of things that can kill them are nearly infinite. If you don't give them enough booze or sleep, they go berserk. Actually, well, pretty much anything makes these guys go on a killing rampage. It's kind of hilarious, but also baffling at the same time. Really, the hardest thing to get past with this game is the interface. It's just a lot to take in all at once. And if you get through, then figuring out the rest of the game shouldn't be a problem. Right? Right? Sure, maybe. At number two is Aurora. When people think of complicated 4X games, the first thing that comes to mind are the Paradox games. Stuff like Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings, or Hearts of Iron. Like these are all complex, like especially now for a new player starting out, but they are nothing compared to Aurora. Those games have pictures, a proper map, and user interface elements. Aurora, 
no, not so much. Instead of the comparatively lush visual design of the Paradox games, you get a ton of Windows menus all as a jumbled mess and some basic ASCII art to give you a vague approximation of the universe. To call this game primitive in the visual department would be, I don't know, uh, calling it an understatement is an understatement. But in terms of pure simulation, it's probably one of the most complex 4X games out there, bar none. Unlike Dwarf Fortress, where the simulation is incredibly granular and you're only dealing with a small handful of dwarves, in this game you control an entire space empire. You can micromanage everything down to the most inconsequential level and it's all done through these gigantic menus and you have to. It's games like this that really show how much we understand basic video game things like player feedback because so many things in Aurora are done by changing things in drop down menus where it's not even clear that the game registered what you're doing. Most players starting this game fresh are going to feel totally lost and it'll take dozens of hours to even wrap your head around the just basics. Hell, looking at this game for too long is painful. I feel like I, I am getting like a migraine trying to read all this tiny text and we're not even spending a lot of time on this thing. And finally, at number one, it's DCS World. In terms of simulation gameplay, there's really just nothing else like this game. If you want the closest possible experience of flying a fighter jet outside of literally flying one, this game's got you covered. The realism is out of control. Depending on the aircraft you're wanting to fly, it, just the simple process of turning the plane on and getting it in the air is complex. Tons of switches, tons of buttons, all these things have to be done in an order that has consequences, and the game doesn't do any of it automatically. You gotta figure all that stuff out yourself. There's a reason players describe this game as being 20% flying and 80% studying, because if you want to fly certain jets like the FA-18 or something like that, you basically have to be flight certified for one in real life, except if you do the work to just play this game, you're not flight certified for one in real life. Same, same process though. Like I said, just doing something as basic as taking off and landing can take, and I'm not joking, hundreds of hours to learn in this game. A lot of the time you are going to be reading actual aircraft manuals, and I'm not gonna call that completely useless. Maybe your goal is to actually fly one of these aircraft and therefore all that information becomes useful to you. But if not, it's hours of your life gone learning to fly a virtual aircraft. I, I mean, maybe that's an exaggeration to some extent, but still, this is a game where you have to be able to accurately recreate the pre-flight sequence of a jet plane, which it doesn't give you instructions for. Like, you have to look up instructions outside of the game to actually do that. For newcomers, this game doesn't so much have a steep learning curve as having a brick wall. And then they give you a sharpened toothbrush and tell you to break through that brick wall with it. Like, it's possible, as I'm sure somebody has done the brick wall thing at some point, but it really requires some commitment. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks. I'm right here on Game Rank.